All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this is going to be one of the continuation for our yesterday's demo class. Uh, I can again briefly uh, go through that uh, high level course content and then we'll take uh, one or two more topics for today. And meantime, if you have any questions, queries, please unmute yourself and then ask your queries. Uh, yeah, this is again going to be a weekend batch, Saturday and Sat Sunday only. Uh, every Saturday and Sunday, going to be like four hours. Uh, that is 8 a.m. IST to 12 a.m. IST, four hours on Saturday and four hours on Sunday. Uh, this is pretty much going to take around six to seven weekends. So yesterday and today are going to be two demo classes, 23rd April and 24th April. The actual class is going to start on 30th of April. So followed by seven weekends, six to seven weekends, the course is going to be complete. Uh, just high level course content. Uh, we'll start with the introduction to again, clusterware, standalone, rack, and then we'll start with uh, building our own uh, rack setup from the scratch. And then we'll try to understand each and every component of rack as comparison with our standalone. And then what is the differences in standalone comparison with rack? So everything will start building up all the content, installation of our clusterware, installation of our database, and uh, and administration of my clusterware, administration of my database, and then uh, and then we'll understand my ASM architecture, administration of ASM, uh, and then followed by uh, your uh, uh, you know, cluster component and then local resource, cluster resource, you know, all those, everything will deep dive and then understand. Uh, and then we'll start with some of the networking concept in, in RAG. Uh, what are the various networks comes into picture and then how to identify them, how to replace them in case of anything goes wrong. And then your OCR, OLR, voting disk, and then various tools to manage your cluster administration. And then followed by your uh, rack component, rack databases uh, administration, like your rack specific parameters, background processes, and then your cluster startup sequences. And then, you know, when it comes to database level, what are the database specific parameters? And then what are the, uh, you know, location of your various database files, control files, alert log files, your trace files, your database files, read log files, password files, all those things will compare with standalone and then try to understand. And then various your table spaces, how the rack instances are going to manage my table spaces. And then followed by your backups and recovery strategies, and then your listeners, and then your uh, multi-tenant architecture, PDBs and CDBs, and then ACFS configurations and rack one node, and then patching of your grid infrastructure, cluster where your database Oracle home, and then your database, and then upgradation of your databases, various methods of upgradations. And then node addition, node deletion, and then rack config. So rack one node, you know, you're going to convert your single instance, standalone instance to rack instance. How you're going to do that? Manual method using DBCA, using R config or using OEM. So all uh, going to be part of this entire course. Right. And then the course fees is going to be 15K of Indian rupees. And then once uh, uh, you know, who are registered for the course, uh, they will be getting access on our Google Drive where uh, pretty much they can access uh, all the course content uh, or rack course material. So where uh, uh, all the uh, materials, all the topics, all the PPTs, workbook, lab exercise, uh, you know, ready VMs, whatever needed for this course, everything will be available on the Google Drive. And then this will be lifetime accessible uh, materials. Uh, we know you can access it anytime and in fact there is no restriction at all you can just download it locally on your laptop and then everyday recordings will be uploaded uh, on the same folder uh, rack course recordings and then on the particular batch of uh, date uh, and then they can download it. so yesterday's demo class so they can just download it and then one interesting part uh, for this course is uh, along with the video uh, I'll be capturing uh, the textbook or the text file, whatever I'm going to execute it in my lab. Uh, all the output will be captured here uh, with the text formatted and then uploaded. The moment when you are watching this video, uh, you can just refer this uh, text file and then you know that will give you what I executed and then what output I got it. And then similarly, you can uh, execute in your lab and then you can feel that one, right? 
uh, and then yeah that's about uh, course content and then the course videos and then recordings how you can access uh, as i said one more point uh, there are already uh, ready vms here uh, you know ready vms for rack so there are so many ready vms here rack with asm and database as a oracle user rack with asm and database with the grid and oracle user so many lab uh, are readily available here one of the lab i just downloaded here uh, if i wanted to show you that one now oh, okay All right so i just downloaded here a uh, rack setup with asm and database using grid and oracle user so this is one of your lab here rack setup with asm and db user rack, uh, rack setup with asm and database with a grid and oracle user so you just need to unzip that particular uh, file and then the moment you unzip oh, let me cancel this one here i just okay i'll just unzip one more time extract here the moment you extract you will get one folder called rack go inside that and then you will get both node 1 node 2 your two node rack along with your shared disks these disks are like shared uh, in your uh, both the vms and you just need to go to your uh, uh, oracle virtual box and you just connect them and then you can try accessing uh, i just remove this vm here All right so just connect over there and then just try accessing your own the lab let's see it's still uh, it's just unzipping it once unzip it I'll, I'll show you that one and then pretty much uh, there are a couple of uh, recordings i uploaded here which will be like very very handy uh, if i go here on this recordings there is a prerequisite sessions uh, these are our previous demo sessions and then some of the lab exercises how you're gonna set up on your own laptop uh, these are like you know prerequisite videos like the moment you watch it and then you will feel that you know setting up your rack environment is very easy uh, and then you will get you will be get started with your course right uh, let's continue with uh, today's topic here uh, we'll cover a uh, few more topics today uh, yesterday we were talking about various rack files and then the location of the respective files of uh, that will continue here Right, so we are talking about data files, control files, and SP files, read log files, archive log files, flashback files, data pump uh, or data dump files, uh, your BCT, your RMA and image copies and backup sets, OCR and voting disk, uh, all will be available inside your ASM disk groups. And then we talked about your flashback logs, and then your read logs. Sorry, uh, flashback logs, control files. Your SP files, data files, your dump files, RMAN files, all are like, you know, one setup. But when it comes to read logs, read logs will be like individual to your, uh, you know, cluster, uh, you know, each particular instances. If I go here, um, right, let's uh, connect to one of my rack instance here. So I'll just take uh, my uh, test DB instance one here. Uh, and then I'll take my test DB instance too. Uh, these are the two instances. We'll connect to these instances and we'll verify various, uh, you know, um, data files and then the other files locations. I'll just connect to Oracle user. I'll set the environment to test DB one dot INV test DB. Uh, pretty much the location is going to be user own app Oracle product 19c slash db home underscore one oh uh, is that the correct home oracle product is 19c db home one Okay, probably that's uh, correct home, I believe. Uh, let me set one more time. Right, so we set the home here. And then pretty much we use, uh, when you are dealing with your rack uh, environment, we use often, like, you know, not often, day in and day out, we're going to use CRSCTL and SRVCTL. CRSCTL is for your cluster management. Whenever you are dealing with your ASM cluster resource and other things, 
we use CRSTL. When you are working with the pretty much on the database level or the service level, we use SRVCTL. SRVCTL status database hyphen D, and then I can mention my database name. So my test DB1, which is running on node one, test DB2, which is running on node two. These are my two cluster nodes my database is running. So they're pretty much handy commands I just listed out here. Okay, so these are like you know, your ad rack administration or commands. Uh, PSF and EF grep SMON. So that will pretty much your standalone or rack doesn't matter. We're going to use the same command to verify your instance and database is running or not on both the nodes. That's one thing. And then your TNS, you're going to do PSF and EF grep TNS, or you're going to do that respective name of that one PSF and EF grep TNS. So various listeners, what are running and which Oracle home they are running. All, all you're going to see it over here. Right, and then D dot bin to check your cluster demons. What are the demons or what are the services they are running here? PSF and EF grep D dot bin. These are your cluster demons along with your listeners and other things. So very first thing what we check uh, when you start your cluster with or when you shut down your cluster with, we're gonna see D dot bin whether all your cluster services or demons are getting started or not. Oh. Uh, the moment I do CRS CTL, uh, check CRS, that will give you, uh, I, let me set the environment to uh, ASM plus ASM2. Uh, CRS CTL, check CRS is a one command. Uh, pretty much these are the four services. If they are online, then your cluster is working fine and then it is healthy. One is your Oracle high ability service. Oracle cluster uh, uh, ready services, cluster synchronization service, and then event manager service. And the same thing, if you run it on the other node, I'll just log out and then I'll set the environment to uh, plus ASM one. Right, uh, let's quickly understand what are these uh, cluster high availability services and then remaining three services. There's a caveat here. This cluster high availability service is individual to that particular node. For example, uh, if I run this command here, right? Um, check cluster all. Just see the differences here. Um, let's go back here one more time. I, I'll run this command here, CRS, it will check CRS. And then you're pretty much getting four outputs here. And then if I do CRS, it will check cluster all you are going to get only three services here from the node one oracle node one you're getting cluster ready services synchronization service and event manager service same thing from the node two you're getting cluster ready services synchronization service and event manager service and the same command if i run it from the other node crs it will check CRS, i'm going to get four output here and then if i do the same command using this CRS it will check cluster all, you will get three, three output from each of those nodes. Node one, you'll get ready services, synchronization service and event manager service. Right, now the question comes, how to bounce my cluster nodes? How to bounce my cluster services? I want to reboot. I want to do a clean shutdown of my cluster services and start it. So let's quickly cover this particular topic because very interesting one. How you're gonna do that? You want to do the cluster shutdown of all the nodes. Uh, you have node one and node two. You want to shut down both the clusters cleanly and then you have to start it up. Uh, one, one way to shut down your cluster is, uh, you can pretty much uh, use like, you know, let me take a diagram here. Uh, like people often get how to bounce my cluster and then what's the difference between your CRS detail check cluster all and then CRS detail check CRS. Uh, if you have like two node cluster here, and then uh, the moment you do this CRSTL check CRS, you will be getting a four output. And then uh, in order to stop this particular node, you're going to do CRSTL stop CRS. 
and then whatever that four services you are getting here all those four services it will be like shutting down in order to start the cluster back you are going to do the same thing crs etl start crs so it's going to start all those four services back online pretty much it's going to do it on node one and then same thing you're going to do that on the other node it's going to do the same thing for you crs etl checks yes it list out all the four services those four services are here high availability services cluster ready services synchronization services and then event manager services these four will if you run this some command on the node one all the services will be like bounced on node one if you run the four commands on the node two all the services will be bound on node one so now question comes uh, i want to shut down all the cluster services being on one single node so you can pretty much use this command whatever you are seeing here these commands you can just connect to any one of the node like either node one or node two connect any one of the node and then just you can run these commands crs detail stop cluster all crs detail start cluster all so you can do first check and then you can stop it but uh, the caveat here is the moment you do crs detail stop cluster all it will not stop the all the cluster services it will stop only these three services cluster ready services synchronization services event manager services you have to stop your hs manually on both the nodes right so the command to stop that one is crs ctl stop hs on both the nodes and then when you start your crs ctl start cluster all it will start only three three services this high uh, this sync ready cluster ready services synchronization services and event manager services and then it will not start your high availability services so you have to start it manually on both the nodes crs etl start hs on both the nodes so when you use your cluster all command when you are bouncing your entire cluster you have to use this hs command separately if not then you can directly connect to a uh, individual node and you can do crs it will stop crs it will stop everything for you so let's do this one here uh, i'll run this command uh, first i'll do check crs cluster we already verified it but one more time right so now check crs cluster for node 1 it is running node 2 also it's running and then if i do stop all i'm going to do the stop all what happens crs etl stop cluster all it's going to stop it from all the cluster nodes if it is a four node five node six node whatever it is it's going to stop it from all the cluster nodes all your services will be down except your high availability service right everything is shutting down here right because that high availability service is individual to that particular node so you have to manually connect to each of those nodes and you have to stop it you cannot stop it remotely right so everything is down now here and now you can run this one uh, you know uh, crs etl uh, this command check crs crs etl check crs i'm going to do this one here on both the nodes we'll see what happens right you can see your all cluster ready services is down your cluster synchronization service is down event manager service is down but what about this oracle high availability services it's still online that will not be down so if i do it on the node 2 same thing node 2 also oracle high availability service is online remaining three services are down if you do like all your database everything is went down but your high availability services is still online right so all your database all the demons everything is went fine but your high availability service is still online here so you have to manually start that particular high availability services the command to start that high availability services is crs etl stop hs so if i go back here you have to do crs etl stop hs on both the nodes so i'll go back here now crs etl stop hs so it's going to shut down your hs alone on that particular node oracle high availability service is stopped 
Now you can run the same command, CRS, it will check CRS. It will, all the four services will be down. You can see, cannot communicate anymore. It's all down. So you have to do the same thing on other node. CRS, it will stop CRS, stop HAS. Your hierarchical high voltage service will be down. And then run the same command, CRS, it will check CRS. It will be down, right? So that is how you can reboot. You can reboot using with the cluster all command or you can reboot using individual node using CRS till stop CRS on that individual particular nodes. And then start also is gonna be like same. If you do CRS till start cluster all, it will start only three services. Your uh, cluster synchronization services, cluster ready services, cluster synchronization services, and event manager services. And your Oracle high ability services, you have to manually start it using this uh, same command, CRS ETL start HAS on both the nodes. Right, so this is, you can either use this one or you can directly use, connect to both the nodes. You can do CRS ETL start CRS. Now we'll do that CRS ETL start CRS. Start CRS. It'll start all the four services on node one and then on node two, CRS ETL start CRS. So CRS ETL start CRS. That is going to start everything for you. Either you can use use, use this CRCTL versus uh, uh, CRCTL with CRS or CRCTL with cluster all. We had cluster level or individual node level. Both uh, commands you can you can use it for your uh, you know stopping and starting your uh, cluster services. Right, CRCTL stop HS, CRCTL start HS. So you can use any combination of bouncing your cluster. Right, and then. Uh, uh, if you want to verify your, uh, you know, Cluffy command is one of the other handy command, uh, handy tool when you are uh, comparing with your uh, all other cluster nodes and, you know, other things. For example, Cluffy compare your OCR across all the nodes and then OCR config with the help of your local and with the help of your, uh, uh, your in order to deal with your Oracle uh, cluster registry OCR file, you can use your OCR config. When you're dealing with your local OLR, Oracle local registry, you can use OCR config hyphen local. And then OCR config show backup, OCR config backup location, all those commands are you know, dealing with your OCR and OLR. And then OLS nodes for your dealing with your cluster node level, list of cluster nodes, what are online, what are pinned, what are unpinned, all those you can use it using OLR. And then a service ETL config scan, status scan, scan listener. A service ETL, you can use it at service level or at your database level. So just I wanted to let's let the cluster start. So we'll we'll check a few more commands here. CRS ETL, uh, check CRS. Uh, you can see all the four services are back online. On the node two also, all the four services are back online here do psfnef grep s mount you can see your both the database instance are back online and node one and node two also you can see both the instance are back online now let's connect your database right so once you start with inv oh here is oracle home we set it already here right uh, right here Right, once you set your Oracle environment, so you can verify ENV, pipeline, grep, capital Vora. Grep, capital Vora, it will tell you your SID base and Oracle and whatever it is set here. Once your environment is set, you can use a service ETL. Whenever you're dealing with your database level or the service level, we're pretty much use a service ETL. A service ETL, uh, first thing is, Check your database status, SRS ETL status, database hyphen D, and then your database name. Database name is test DB. SRVC ETL status, database hyphen D, and then your DB name. So that will pretty much tell you whether the database is running or shut down, or which node it is running and which node is not running. Your Test DB instance one, test DB instance two, both are running on node one and node two. That's one thing. And then the other command, we want to check the configuration of that particular database, SRFCTL config database. 
config slictl config database hyphen d and then your database name and then pretty much you're going to get all the database configuration relation relation uh, configuration files and configuration information your database unique name your database name and your oracle home and who's the owner of the database and then sp file location and your password file location and then your other information if you have a domain name configured and your start option is open shutdown option is immediate database role is primary policy management is automatic server pools if you are configured your disk groups data and reco and then mount paths if there is any mount specific path your services and uh, database type is react database and the start concurrency stop concurrency or uh, your group associated to the database who install and your database instances are test db1 and test db2 configured nodes oracle node 1 and node 2 your crs critical like these path are like not using these are like default and then database administration managed or policy managed so this is all your database configuration you can verify it over here all these commands you can just uh, verify if you want to stop the database alone you can use SRSTL stop database in database name uh, if you want to start it you can use SRSTL start database and then database name if you want to stop only one instance on node one you can pretty much use uh, instance wise SRSTL status instance hyphen d database name and instance name you're going to stop the instance start the instance uh, being an any of the node you can you can do that one for example, I am at node one. I want to stop that node two instance here. And then I can do it from the node one itself. I can pretty much use SRSTL status instance hyphen D, your database name. So I can say SRSTL status instance hyphen D and then my uh, database name of uh, test DB is my database name and then hyphen I, my instance name. So that will give me only that instance related uh, output. For example, if I do it for two, it'll give it for my second instance. So even though I'm at node one, I can query it for second node. So I want to stop that second instance alone. Instead of status, I can make it as a stop here. I no need to go to that particular node and stop my instances. But by being at my instance one, I can stop it out. So these are your handy commands, CRSCTL and SRSCTL. So we'll pretty much use it once we start our regular classes. So now coming back to our uh, main topic, the various files of my database, right? So the moment you do SRSTL config database, you already got two file information here. One is your SP file and one is your password file. So I'll take uh, uh, one duplicate session here of that node one. And then I'll log in with the grid user. A grid user is same Oracle user here. I'll go to my of uh, ASM command prompt. I'll connect with the Oracle user. Uh, so if you do PS F and EF grep S1, you will get to know who is your grid owner and who is your Oracle owner. Your ASM is also owned by Oracle and your database is also owned by Oracle. In some scenario, customer may install ASM with a grid user, database with a uh, Oracle user. In that case, instead of Oracle, you have to log in with a grid user when you are dealing with your ASM instance. In my case here, both uh, database and grid are installed with your Oracle user. So I'll set the environment to ASM. Again, verify using ENV pipeline, trep, capital Vara. You can see your Oracle SID is ASM on base and your grid home. Do ASM CMD hyphen P. That will go to your ASM command prompt here. You can see, right? And then why you are using this hyphen P here? And if uh, uh, do LSDG, LSDG list disk group. You can see your data and record. The moment I go inside data and then the path will be keep on appending here. Uh, do LS here. And then if I go inside rack CDB, again, it will go data and record. It will tell you, uh, uh, it will tell you why, uh, you know, uh, which path you are in. Like right now you, right now here, like, uh, SMCMD, you have to use this PWD. PWD tell you which path you are in. So once you use this hyphen P, it will directly tell you which path you are in. You no need to do this PWD. So if I do LS and then if I go inside my data file here, that will be like, again, keep appending here. 
the path will be keep appending here you no need to do pwd directly the path will be like recognized here if i exit and then if i don't use this hyphen p just use asmcmd no harm in that oh my one second guys my service went down i'll just reconnect it so if you don't use that uh, uh, hyphen p you don't see that particular path give me a second i'll just connect here my back end connection has dropped i'll just reconnecting it here give me a second right it is back now let's take one duplicate session here root so you, most of the times we will not be having a root access in uh, many organizations because that's a highly restricted your os admin will be having will be having a oracle user plus sudo access to root or env um, i'm going to set the environment to plus asm and then asm cmd hyphen p again one more time lsdg uh, the moment i go inside my data so you can see data is appended Again, do ls, go inside your rack cdb, do ls. Again, the data plus rack cdb is appended. If you go inside data file, ls, you can see your everything like you keep on appending your path. Now, if I exit, and then if I don't use this hyphen p, and then do just asmcmd, that also works fine, lsdg. But you don't know that which path you are in. You have to always use pwd. If I go inside data, and then do ls, and then you have to type a pwd now you are inside plus data so that's a one of the differences using hyphen p and then without hyphen p doesn't matter you can use both of them right uh here uh, one question in the chat what is this hyphen d and hyphen i uh hyphen d is for database db and hyphen i is for instance uh where is that command here okay this is hyphen d is your database name and hyphen i is your instance name you can see your database name is test db and then hyphen i is your instance name of uh, your test db one and then test db or two so this is your instance name uh, pretty much uh, if you want to get the more details about your database name instance name and all uh, i'll just explain it here uh, i'll go down um, what happens let's consider your uh, uh, two node rack uh, let's see two node rack here and then two node rack here right and then i'll just uh, compare with your two node rack database with the production and then the standby right so this is your uh, two node rack here two node rack uh, this is your uh, prod node 1 and then this is your prod node 2 considering two node production database and then this is your dr node 1 and then this is your dr node 2 so these are like two node rack here and then you are you are running with your plus asm1 and then you have your plus asm2 and then you have your plus asm1 again here because these two are two separate clusters and then again running asm2 here and then you have your prod db1 instance 1 and then you have your prod db2 instance 2 and then here your dr db1 and then you have your drdb2 instance so why i'm trying to explain this one since you asked this instance name and database name so i'm just trying to explain here uh, pretty much your database will be having three or four uh, uh, names here uh, let's connect here root i'll just try to explain that uh, that will uh, most of us we, most of us will be having those doubts in mind uh, feel free to ask any of those questions that's how uh, we will learn right so always ask question that's the only uh, you know thing we can learn it right so let's connect back to your database here now i'll connect to sql plus slash ssdb inside my database i'll do a uh, show parameter what happened okay i have to log in with oracle user so the moment you see right here, I 
with the root user, I set the environment, SID and Oracle home. I tried to log in with Oracle SQL plus SSDBA. It says senior value username and password because root user will not have access to connect to my database. I have to log in with Oracle user in order to use that OS authentication. Again, I'll talk that what is OS authentication, what exactly this SQL plus SSDBA command will do without password or how it is allowing uh, us to log into database, right? Right, now I connected, if I do show parameter, just I'll do show parameter name. Okay, uh, the moment I do name, I can get a DB name, DB nickname, global name, and then the instance name. These are the four specific names here. Uh, pretty much uh, we use it for all the databases. Your DB name, and then your DB, sorry, DB name, DB underscore uh, unique name, underscore name, and then global underscore name, and then instance underscore name. Right, these are the four names here. I'll just keep it here, four names. Uh, the comparison between your prod and DR setup, what happens, your DB name here uh, for your production database, your DB name is prod DB. And then your DB nickname, most of the times, your DB nickname and DB name are going to be same here. Prod DB. Prod DB and Prod DB. Your DB name and DB nickname are same in the most of the times. Your global name is nothing but if you're using your domain name, that will come into picture here. Prod DB dot uh, Wipro dot com or your oracle.com or infosys.com, pcs.com. They're gonna append the domain name in front of the database name. That's their global name. And then instance name, you can use anything here. For example, since the database name is prodDB, they will use prodDB1 and then prodDB2. So they're gonna use the instance name like that. Database name uh, appended with your uh, this one to the numbers. If you have like four node rack, you will see prod DB uh, one, two, three, four. You have four instances. So this instance name, we can give anything. So right now I, I mentioned as a prod DB one and prod DB two. Either like you can use this one also. Nobody know how in that. Like for example, Malik one and Malik two. You can use anything. Nobody is stopping you. It's all your choice. You can use Malik one or Malik two, but it's a odd. Nobody use like this. Most of the times they will use the same whatever the DB name with uh, this, uh, uh, you know, whatever the suffix or prefix, right? One, two, that they will be keep on adding the instance wise. When it comes to DR, so he's considering this is a production database and you set up a DR database here. And your DB name will be always derived from your production database. Your DB name is always derived from your production database because your DR is replica of your production database. Your DB name will be always replica of your production database. So your DB name is going to be prod DB. No, no way you can change your DB name. You cannot change DB name to Malik or you cannot change DB name to DRDB or anything else. This DB name is always derived from your production database because this data DR is a replica of your production database. But however, your DB unique name, you can keep it as anything here, DRDB. You can keep the unique name is anything here because you can see the name itself suggests it's a unique unique to that particular database nowhere it is related to any other database even though this particular dr database is derived from this prod db only the db name will be derived and the db unique name i can change it to dr or i can give it to any name here and then global name is also same oh, you know always follow with your uh, db unique name prod db drdb dot wipro dot com or whatever name you want you can provide and an instance name, we can give it any name here, drdb1 and DR, drdb2, anything you can provide here like name. So these are your various understanding of your db name, instance name, global name, or db unique name. Often people will get confused with when you're dealing with especially React and especially with uh, drag with the data guard. Oh, you know, why my DB name is same between prod and database, prod database and DR database. Why DB nickname is 
change between prod and dr both are same but why unique name is changed what is global name what are the instances like you know they always get confused but this is what the uh, the truth factor is only db name is unique between your prod and dr rest other names are like individual to that particular database you can uh, give it anything here right so that's about the names we just uh, debated uh, right coming back to our original topic uh, the various file systems uh, let's go back here sltl config sltl status and then do config database config database your test db and then already as i mentioned we already got the location of two paths here one is your sp file and one is your password file and then if i go to this particular path here i connected here my asm if i go here ls hyphen l and i can see my sp file location i'll just exit and then i can use hyphen p right so if i go to this path sorry if i go to this path here ls hyphen l and then this is your uh, file name here and then this is the actual sp file what it created and then it has a soft link here soft link to this particular file name here data test db parameter file sp file and then this is your uh, file number and then this is your uh, db id so this is a soft link it will get created inside the moment you create any file inside your asm this is your actual original file uh, if i go back here you can see your data test db parameter file sp file test db dot ora this file has a soft link uh, for this particular file that's one thing okay and the second thing is your password file let's go to this particular location here cd ls hyphen l and you can see your ora p or pw test db and again it has a soft link here and then soft link to this particular file here and again this is the file name and then your uh, db id right so that's uh, two files already we got the two file location one is my sp file and one is our password file and then if i go back one directory do ls hyphen l uh, i can see control files a data files online log files we already see this parameter file and password file if i go insert password file do ls hyphen l and then this is my control file one and then if i go data file ls hyphen l and these are my data files here sysox system undo and then users and then uh, this is my data files and if i go to online read logs here ls hyphen l and then uh, your online read logs um, uh, your uh, read log file one uh, these are like your read log groups read log group one read log group two read log group three and group four uh, this will be having a multiplex control files and multiplex read log files and then those are uh, sit, resides under data and record disk group so this is inside my data disk group and then i have these four files uh, now go inside uh, temp files these are your temp files Right, I have one temp file here. Okay, now I'll go back to uh, again LSDG. I'll go to my record disk group here. I'll go to my record disk group here. Record disk group is here. If I go inside Rico, okay, plus Rico, LS hyphen L. Uh, again, I'll go inside my test DB, LS hyphen L. Again, inside that record disk group, you have your archive log, you have auto backup control files and online log if i go inside my archive log these are all your archive logs coming from your instance one and instance two if i do latest folder here i have a thread one a thread two this thread one and thread two indicates this particular archive log is generated by instance one thread two this particular archive log is gen uh, generated by my instance two so you always see thread one and thread two thread one and thread two indicates instance one and instance two who is created this particular archive log uh, you can identify using this thread. That's your archive log. Uh, and then going back to your, uh, going back to auto backup or going back to control file. So again, control file two is here inside my record disk group. If I scroll it up, I had a control file one 
inside my, you can see this is my control file one, which was inside my data disk group, test DB and then control. Here I have control file two, which is inside record disk group, test DB control file. So it's a multiplexing control file. One is on data and one is on record. Even data disk group goes, goes down, crashes. I have one more control file to sustain my database. Uh, that's a uh, control files. If I go to online read log, I have one more set of online read log here inside record disk group. Yeah, same group, group one, two, three, four. Here also I had group one, two, three, four, four groups, four control files. Uh, four read log group, four read log files, and again four group, four read log files. One set of read log files are inside data disk group. One set of uh, files are inside my record disk group. So this is uh, you know multiplexing of your control files, and also we have this auto backup, auto backup of your control files, control file and your SP file. So always any changes happen at your database level or any backup runs, it'll gonna take one of the uh, control backup of your, uh, one of the auto backup of your control file and SP file inside your auto backup. Right, so let's connect to your database and then same thing we'll query it here. Uh, select uh, file underscore name from DBA underscore data underscore files inside at your database level. The moment you do list of your data files, you have your system, sysox, undo users, and then undo TBS. You have undo TBS one and undo TBS two. So both are, uh, you know, two instance specific undo TBS. Uh, you know, all are available inside data, test TB and data files. That's what uh, what we saw here, right? All your data files are inside data, test TB and then data files. That's one thing here. And then uh, describe um, V dollar log file. I can list select uh, group number comma member from VDollar log file. So you can, uh, let's see, set pages, lines. Right, you can see your group here, redo group, redo group one. One is on data and one is on record. This is the same redo group one, but it has a two files here. One is on data and one is on record. Similarly, redo group two here, one is on data and one is on record. It's a kind of a multiplex control redo log files, but with a two different groups here. And again, redo log group three having a, a multiplex redo logs here. Again, redo log group four also has multiplex redo log group here. And similarly, describe V dollar control file, select, uh, you can say name, from with our control file. Same thing, uh, you have two control files here. One is on data and one is on record disk group. So all whatever the files you're gonna see it over here, all will be like available inside your disk groups. And then let's exit. Uh, we verified control files, uh, SP files, and we verified password files, we verified uh, read log files, control files, data files, all are available inside this group. And then coming back to your database alert log, if I do locate alert underscore test cdb one dot log. So these are like your instance specific alert logs. Uh, sorry, it's a test db, locate test db one dot log. So this is your node one instance one specific uh, your alert log. Uh, use your own app, Oracle, Diag, RDBMS, TestDB, TestDB1, Trace, and your alert log, tail hyphen F, and then this is your uh, TestDB1, instance one, running on node one, that particular alert log here. And then similarly on the node two, You can set the environment, uh, log into Oracle user here, dot or INV, test DB2, that's the instance to test DB is the database name, and then number two is the instance name. Uh, what's the Oracle home? We copied here, right? Okay, here. This is your Oracle home. Um, and then again, do the same thing, locate alert underscore 
testdb2.log. So you will get here user on app Oracle Diag RDBMS testdb testdb2 trace and then alert testdb2.log. So this is your instance to alert log. So this database alert log and then the database particular trace files and your uh, all the Oracle binaries, all are like individual to that particular node, locally available on that particular node. Apart from that, whatever we discussed, your data files, control files, your read log files, archive log files, your password files and SP files, everything is inside your uh, ASM disk groups and then common across all the instances. All will be accessing the same files. But your database alert log, trace files, your database softwares, and then everything, all those configuration files are individual to that particular database nodes. And then you can see individual files and all the nodes. If I go to trace location here on this node two, and then you can see all the trace files respect to that, that those background processes and background services here. And same thing on node uh, one as well. Node one, if I go to that particular trace location here, and then this is like all the background, background services, dump files and trace files here. And then the software, as I discussed yesterday, so the software I need to install on node one, and then also software I need to install on node two. Uh, the same thing, like you know, if I go back and then do the config database. So this is your database related uh, home. Like if I go inside Oracle home, do LS. So this is a software, Oracle software installed on node one. Same thing, uh, the same Oracle software installed on node two as well. LSFNL. This is a software uh, installed on this node two. Why we need this uh, separate software on node one and node two here? Because we have a database instance running here on node one, this test db one, to manage this particular database instance, all the uh, Oracle software is mandatory here. Similarly, on node two also, we have this particular instance here, test db two, and then to manage this particular test db two, all the database software is mandatory here. That's where we install a separate database software on node one and node two, and then that is individual to that particular node. And then question comes here, why we install this database software separately? Can I have a common shared mount point between node one and node two and then install my database software? Uh, yes, obviously you can go ahead and then do a common shared mount point between node one and node two, and then you can install your software in that common shared point, and then you can use that common Oracle home and then that common Oracle home can manage both instances on node one and node two because you are mounted, you are mounting that NFS mount point common across both the nodes. And then that software is more than enough to manage your instances. But that has a lot of limitations. You cannot do a rolling patching because the moment if you want to bring down uh, one instance for patching, you have to patch, you have to apply the patch on that Oracle home, your all the instances will be down because that's a common Oracle home. If you bring it down, all the instances will go down. So a lot of demerits with that shared Oracle home, but it is achievable, you can do that one. Right, so that's about uh, managing your cluster waves and bringing down, bringing up and managing your databases and verifying your various database files. Uh, and then uh, you know, so many other things. Uh, there's a one question in the chat here. Do you have a DG or alternative to it in the rack? Uh, we have to set up, uh, uh, you know, DG, DG is the only high ability service with Oracle. Uh, you know, you have the moment you have production database, you have to configure your data guard. So, you know, data guard here, what I showed, uh, two node production database to two node data guard. So, if you don't have a rack set up on your data guard, assuming that you have only one server here, and then you can configure your uh, two node production database to single data guard. Or assuming that you have only one uh, you have only one production server here single standalone and then you have a rack uh, data guard here and then this also is achievable like you know single production database with a rack data guard or rack production database with a single data guard or from the rack to rack you can configure it and then production has a two node rack dr has a three node rack you can do it all the mismatch combinations are allowed here but data guard is the only solution for high availability with respect to Oracle. Right, so then go back here. Uh, what we're discussing, like, you know, that is how we will manage our clusterware using CRS DTL, bringing down, bringing up, and then managing my clusterware. 
and then most of the times we'll use SRCTL to manage my uh, database, bring down and bring up and then manage your uh, all the database related services and other things. And then uh, we'll go back. Uh, uh, there are two important command here. One is your CRCTL stat resource hyphen T, CRCTL stat resource hyphen T and hyphen init. Uh, what exactly these two command will do whenever you are bouncing or stopping and starting, we're pretty much you're going to use this hyphen T hyphen init hyphen init will list out all the default demons default services, which are mandatory, which are necessary to start my database. Uh, start my cluster services. Let's set the uh, environment back to my ASM. Right, so if I do CRCTL stat resource hyphen T hyphen init, so these are your core services, core resources, which are uh, running on your node one. And the same command, if you do it on the other node, dot var INV plus ASM2, sorry, uh, dot var INV plus ASM2. If I run the same command, CRCTL stat resource hyphen T hyphen init, again, you will see the core services which are mandatory and which supposed to be up and running. Whenever you are uh, starting your clusterware or shutting down your clusterware, you have to always check this command, CRCTL stat resource hyphen T hyphen init, which services are going down, which services are coming up, uh, which is this one. Okay, I connected to node two here. Uh, let's stop this one here. Plus one, CRCTL stat stop CRS. So on node one, I'm shutting down my of uh, cluster services here and then go to node one and then keep on running this one and then you will see which services are going down and then which services are like you know online where we stopped it node one right yeah Right, now you can see your services are storage went offline, your MDSN went offline, and then your disk on ACF driver went offline, and your cluster synchronization service went offline, and then your ASM is still offline, uh, up and running, your cluster interconnect is up and running. Right, everything you went down now. Right, so your cluster availability service went down, and then nothing is running here. Right, and then now you are going to start your cluster CRS CTL, start CRS, and then the moment you start it, immediately it say your cluster availability service is started. But you have to verify with this command, uh, you know, CRS CTL start resource hyphen T hyphen in it, and then you will get to know which services it is starting and then where it is getting stuck. Now it is getting stuck here. It means you have to check this particular GIP CD log. Right now you can see your CRS T is starting, and then if it is getting stuck here. It is like we'll be like in starting state only. Then you have to verify this CRSD log here. Right now that is already started CRSD. Now it is starting your cluster interconnect. Then it is getting stuck here. Then you have to check for that particular log. Right now, most of the things are offline. Now it can see your CRSD is intermediate. Now it is not coming up. Uh, other way to verify is your like you know, PSF and EF grep D dot bin. So that will your demands will be keep on coming here. So that you need to monitor whether the demands are coming or not. And then your CRCTL stat resource hyphen T and then hyphen init is a very, very handy command when you are dealing with your bouncing your cluster. So now you can see all the services are back online except your disk one. So this one is used in Exadata only. So that's why it's always offline in your uh, normal rack system. So it's always offline. Only in Exadata it will be like online. Right, most of the services are online now here. So it means your all the services are back online now here, right? You can see your all the services are back online. So you can very pretty much you can verify you this init command whenever you are doing a patching or bouncing your cluster where. And then apart from that, you have this CRCTL stat resource hyphen T without that init. The moment you do hyphen T, that will list out all the cluster services with all the remote databases. You can see here, right? CRCTL stat resource hyphen T, your listener is online on both the nodes. Your listener underscore rack DB is online on both the nodes. And your, your, we're not using this one. This is has other feature. 
your net one is very very important that's uh, your physical network which is associated to both the nodes and your ons notification service it's online and these are your local resources whatever you're seeing here it's local to that particular nodes and then whatever you're seeing here these are your cluster resources here this cluster resources your asm uh, net listener underscore asm you can see your asm net listener here and in this particular ASM net listener is uh, pretty much needed for your Flex ASM. So we'll talk a few points on Flex ASM once we start our actual classes. And then you can see your data disk group here. It's online on both the nodes. And then there's a bug with the Oracle uh, 19C. The moment you install your Oracle 19C database, default it will consider it as a three node cluster here. You can see this is a three node cluster. Ideally it is a two node cluster. We are using node one and node two but uh, default it will consider it as a three node cluster here. That's where you know your ASM listener one extra entry, which is offline and your data disk group will consider it as a three node, but it's offline here. Often people will get confused when they're dealing with 19C, why this third node is offline. But ideally we don't have a third node. We have only two node. It's a bug with the uh, Oracle 19C. Right, and then your uh, scan one, scan two, scan three, three listeners and your record disk group here online on both the nodes and your ASM instance, which is online on both the nodes. ASM will be always started and stable because ASM will never go to uh, open mode. That is only having a metadata. It will max go to started mode. Right, uh, uh, one question here in the chat. Uh, do we need to configure listeners or coming automatically once we run the command? Uh, most of the times, so this particular listener, right? Listener underscore rack uh, standby. This is a local listener we configured for my database. It is left to you whether you want to configure local listener or not. If you don't, this particular listener is the default listener which will always run with your grid home. And then if I do ps EF grep TNS, uh, you can see, right? This particular listener. It's a default listener, always runs from your grid home. You can see grid home, use your own app, 19C grid. The moment you set up your rack cluster, default listener will be get started here from your grid home. And then default listener underscore scan, scan one, scan two, scan three, all will be get started. Those are your scan listener, always runs from your grid home. And then default your ASM net listener. This is for your, uh, you know, uh, we are not using this listener. This is only for your flex ASM uh, started with your 19C. Again, this also runs from your 19C grid home. Uh, and then you have configured your multiple databases here, right? You can see I have my test DB here. I have my rack DB here. Uh, this particular test DB, I don't have any listener. What that, done, what that means? If I don't have any listener for this test DB, it means no users or no application is able to connect to this test DB. That's not the fact. If you if you just install your database and if you don't configure any listener, default this listener, this particular database will be listening under your grid listener. So anybody can connect to this particular test DB database via your grid listener, the listener which is running from your grid. And then consider this rack standby database here. This particular database, I have configured a manually the local listener inside that Oracle home. This particular Rack standby is running in 12C Oracle home. Use your own app, uh, Oracle product 12C DB home. And then I have a local listener called listener underscore Rack standby. This is a local listener I configured under that particular Oracle home where uh, this particular listener is registered with this particular standby database. Anybody want to connect to this particular standby database, they will use this particular, uh, they will connect to this particular list, uh, listener underscore rack standby, and then it will connect to your uh, rack standby database. So always it is recommended to have your local listener configured for each and every database. Don't uh, register your database with the default listener, which is running from your grid home. So always it's the best practice to configure your local listener under that particular Oracle home so that you know you can manage that listener by your own. So if I go here, uh, CD Oracle home network admin, and then this is my listener here. If I do cat of that listener, I can see uh, listener underscore rack standby. This is a local listener. 
uh, which is running on that particular node. Right, uh, that's about our uh, listeners. And then your record disk group will be up and running and your ASM will be up and running. Your ASM net one network, which is associated to your uh, net one physical network here. And then uh, your uh, VIPs of individual nodes, node one VIP, node two VIP. And again, we are not worrying about this one. We'll talk later. Your database, rack standby database, both are online. You can see open read only. This is my standby database, which is open read only. And then I have a scan VIPs here, three scan VIPs up and running. I have a test DB here, and then test database, which is open on both the nodes. And then I have a services configured for the test DB, test DB, test DB, uh, SV service, and then dot SV here, both are online here. So then there are a few keywords you need to understand in this command here. Whatever uh, you know, service ends with dot, SRV here, that means that's a service name registered with that particular database. Whatever it ends with that DB, that's a database name, the test DB, and then your rack DB, whatever ending with DB, that's a database name. Whatever ending with VIP, that is your uh, VIP address, VIP uh, virtual IP address. Your scan is virtual IP here, and then your node VIP, you can see your, these are your VIPs. And then Whatever uh, you are seeing here, this one, right? Dot LSNR, that is your listeners. Your scan one, scan two, scan three. If I go here, your listener, and then your listener here. Whatever ending with dot LSNR, that's your listener. And then whatever ending with dot DG, that is your disk group, data disk group, and then your record disk group. That's a DG here, disk group. And then some other network, like, you know, dot network in, ending with your interfaces or physical network. And then we have one more, uh, ASM network, those are your network. So those are your uh, keywords you need to understand over here. All right, uh, that's about your cluster configuration and understanding of your cluster uh, level resource and services. Uh, let's quickly uh, check for few few more topics about uh, your uh, uh, startup sequence and then the respective logs. We just simulated uh, shutting down, starting of your, your cluster and all. And then pretty much we're using that uh, CRCTL stat resource hyphen T hyphen init. And then if any particular services are getting struck here, for example, uh, you know, uh, let's see, uh, your CRSD, it says it will be in starting mode. And then sometimes you see your CRSD is in like intermediate state. And then this service is not shutting and your cluster is not coming up. It will be struck here in starting up of your CRSD services. Or sometimes it will be like struck here uh, starting off of your GIP CD. And sometimes it will be like struck at starting up of your storage. So you can see it will be in starting state when that indicates that you know, something wrong with your cluster and then it is not starting. So just take this as an example, okay? My CRSD is not coming up. It will be in starting state. And sometimes you can see it is in intermediate state and then not online. So that time what you need to do simply, uh, you have this uh, uh, daemon name here, CRSD. Just take copy of that one. You can do locate and then uh, CRSD dot TRC. Just do this command, locate CRSD dot TRC. That will give you that location of that a trace file. You can do tail of that particular log file and then you can see what's happening in that particular log file. That's a one way. You can simply use this locate and then that particular trace file that will give you the location of your uh, you know the log file and then you can tail that one and then you can see what is happening in that one again one more time uh, i can do one more in it and then i can take this one uh, gipcd again same command locate gipcd dot trc again that will give you a uh, same location here trace file do a tail hyphen f and then that also will be keep on updating. And then any particular error message, warning messages, you have to take appropriate action on that. Same thing, uh, GPNPD, again, do locate. GPNPD.trc, same thing, you can see that location name here, and then tail hyphen F, and then uh, you can see what's happening there. If there's any error message, you'll see that error message warnings and all. Based upon that, we need to fix that issue and then uh, you know, get started with that. 
and then sometimes people will say locate command will not work and then how to find that all the log files in starting with the 12.2 and 19c all the files are available in the same location you have to go to diag uh, and then go inside the trace you can see this is your diag location use your own app uh, oracle like if i do env grep oracle so this is your oracle base uh, you can see this is your diag location here use your own app oracle diag so go up to your diag location and then inside that uh, your crs you have to go inside your crs crs and then inside that node specific uh, directory this is your node node specific directory again inside that crs cd crs and then inside that you can see your trace files the moment you go inside trace you will see a lot of files over there all the respective services log files you can you can get it over there uh, ll gp npd star you can see your gp npd trace file ll gipcd uh, trace files you can see your gipcd trace file ll cssd star and then ll crsd star Right, you, you can see your CRSD and then CSSD and then all those log files all are available in the same common location. Use your own app, Oracle, Diag, CRS and then your node name and then CRS and trace. Same thing if I go to other node, second node and then I just need to change this particular node name here. I'll make it as a node two, this is the second node. And then I can see all the logs here, same thing. LL, GIPCD, you can see your GIPCD trace file or TRM file, LL, uh, you know, your CRSD. You can see your CRSD file. All the log files are available in the one common location. And then you can troubleshoot whichever services are not starting. Check for that particular log file and then you can troubleshoot. Right, so that's about uh, uh, checking the log file and then, uh, you know, verifying that what's happening at your database level. And then quickly, We'll talk now on the uh, startup sequence. Uh, any cluster startup sequence has uh, four levels of uh, sequences here, four, four stages, I can say. Uh, the moment you do here, uh, let's go back here. You did a CRSTL, start CRS. The moment you do CRSTL, start CRS, very first service will be your uh, OHSD. OHST service will be get started here. Uh, if I do uh, ps -F, grep d dot bin, uh, your OHST service is the first service which will get started here. Uh, where is that OHST service? Right, so your OHST service is the one, very first service which will get started here. OHST service, OHST dot bin. So that OHST service will get started then once that OHST service will get started, it will internally starts, uh, you know, uh, two major services, I can say. Uh, one is your, let's go back here. Um, uh, these four services will get started in the first level. You can see level one, level two, level three, and level four. So these are the four levels of uh, starting off of your cluster services. You are just doing a single command, CRS, it will start CRS. That single command, first it will start your OHST service using that wrapper script. Once that wrapper script is, uh, you know, started, you are starting your OHST services. These are the three major service, four major services. Out of that, only two are considered here. One is your CRSD agent, and then your CSST monitor, and then your Vara root agent, and then Vara agent. These are the four services it will get started here, and then. These four services internally starts a bunch of second level services. This CSST agent will start this CSST daemon and then CSST monitor will start this CSST monitor daemon. And then that's it. These two services are done with their jobs. And then two major services, this Vara agent and Vara root agent, these two services will start bunch of other background services. For example, this Vara, root agent will start these many services here crsd ctssd discmon and then acfs drivers 
and then this vara agent will start these many bunch of background services background demons your asm demon gipcd gpnpd evmd and mdnsd and then out of this second level these many background demons two very important services one is your oh, sorry uh, only one important demon is your crsd this crsd internally start two more agents one is again same vara agent and vara root agent one is vara root agent and is one is a vara agent and then this vara root agent will start a bunch of your cluster level uh, demons cluster level services and then vara agent will start a few more uh, cluster level and database level demons this particular vara root agent will start your gns and then your acfs registry your scan vips your gns ips your node ips and your network all the pretty much network related uh, you know uh, with a uh, uh vips and scan ips and physical ips and network level uh, things everything will be handled by this vara root agent and then this particular vara agent will start about your cluster level and then database level uh, database and then cluster specific resources for example your asm instances and your ons notification services e ons fast notification services your uh, gsd your listeners scan listeners your services your database instances your disk groups everything will be like started with your vara agent if i go back here uh, you can see your vara root agent and then vara agent i can see these two our services are again here and then um, again two more here uh, your vara root agent that bin vara agent that bin so uh, there are like pretty much uh, four services you can see it here vara agent two types vara agent here and then uh, vara root agent two types of vara root agent root agent here that is because one set of vara agent and vara root agent are started by your ohst and then one set of vara agent and vara root agent are started by your crst right so you can see two services are here and then two services are here right uh, if i go further same thing first level your ohst will responsible for starting these four services your cssd agent cssd monitor vara agent and vara root agent and in the second level uh, you know your second level your cssd agent will start your uh, cssd uh, agent will start your cssd demon cssd monitor will start your cssd demon and then remaining bunch of services will be started here in second uh, level right and then uh once those services are started in the second level here and then those are internally responsible your crsd is responsible for starting two more root agents and or agent uh using your crsd or uh, this span and then those two agents are responsible for starting all the cluster resources like you know all your network related and then all your database and cluster related services will be get started here so then again uh it's all managed by internally at your cluster level but as a dba what we need to do we just need to monitor one single command when you are starting your cluster where that is your crs uh, ctl stat resource hyphen t hyphen init that's a single command that will indicate which services it is getting struck this is a single command crs ctl stat resource hyphen t hyphen init and then which services is getting struck we have to look for that particular log file or the trace file and then troubleshoot why it is not starting based upon the error messages indicated in that right um, any questions so far i think it's too much what we covered all our technical stuff but feel free to ask any questions if you are having it uh few more concept we can cover here right let's uh i hope like this is clear about your cluster startup sequence right uh, if any questions you can feel free to ask or else like you know i can cover one or two topics now at the database level and then we can close this today's session hi malik yeah yeah you said like that oracle high availability services uh, starting while cluster is uh, starting time or stop time we have to use crs ctl stop crs right at that time oracle availability services 
independently down or we need to manually down this you okay. in the moment you use this uh, uh, this command right crs it will stop crs all the four services will be down has including all the cluster synchronization service and then your event manager everything will be down if you use this stop cluster all then your has will not be down you have to manually down it okay that got it right if you use it like most of the times cluster most of the time we will never use this one uh, you know the moment you use it right what happens manually you have to connect to individual node you have to stop separately your has rather than that you just use your crs to stop crs everything will be stopped for you okay right uh, let's go back here right so next question is uh, you got a access to your node one here and then you are connecting to your database here uh, you got your test db1 and then how you know whether this database is a react database or not one of the common question they will ask in interview uh, you got a database access and then how you know whether it's a react database or stand alone database uh, pretty much there are many way to identify that uh, just i will set the environment now Uh, test db and then where is my oracle home do i have that here All right so this here oracle home just stop here i'll just connect to my database here uh one parameter is this one uh, you can verify show parameter cluster or you can check this one show parameter name cluster database you can check for this particular database name uh, this particular parameter name inside your database your name cluster and square database is true that cluster and square database indicates it's a react database you can do show parameter cluster a simple command show parameter cluster the moment you say cluster underscore database is equal to true that indicates it's a rag database right it's going to be your, it's going to be your rag database that's the one way you can you can verify it uh, your database is a rag database or not and then the moment uh, if you don't want to connect to database and then don't want to check for that one uh, the moment you say it's a asm storage and running here and then you can pretty much use your service detail config database Hyphen D, test DB. The moment you see a service detail config, a service detail config database, uh, you can see type of database. It's a React database. Whether your database is a React database or not, you can verify by using connecting to database and show parameter cluster. It says true, or else you can do a service detail config database, and then the type of database is React database. It's a one way you can uh, verify it out. and then what are your uh, it's a we got it it's a rag database and then you have a four node cluster and then i want to know how many nodes my database instances are running how many nodes my database is configured uh, same command sls it will config database hyphen d which will tell you configure database instances you have a test db1 test db2 configured a node 1 and node 2 i think it's a two node rag database you can pretty much by looking at this sls it will config command you can pretty much say that okay it's a two node rag database configured on this node 1 and node 2 or else you can use srv ctl status srv ctl status database hyphen d and then test cdb so test db the moment you do srv ctl status database that also pretty much tells you okay it's a two node rag database configured on node 1 and node 2 with both are running here either you can use this ssl ctl config or ssl ctl status or if you don't want you can connect to database and then you can pretty much do describe gb dollar uh, you know your instances describe gb dollar instance so in that select instance id comma instance name comma uh, your uh, um status from gb dollar instance 
you can pretty much see your instance one, instance two, ID one and ID two, both are in open status. So it's a two node uh, rack. It's a two node rack. Either you can verify using your database level or your SRS Util status database will tell you or SRS Util config database will tell you. That's uh, how you can verify. Or else you can do show parameter uh, SP file and then you'll get your SP file here. You can do create P file equal to, you can create a P file inside your temp location. Init of uh, your test DB dot Vara from from sp file right you created your p file here from your this sp file now we exit and then now we can cat this one the way to cat you pretty much see your instance one instance two specific parameters here and then scroll down here instance one listener instance two listener here and you can see your instance numbers here test db1 instance, test db2 instance, instance number one and instance number two. So that indicates it's a two node cluster database. There are various methods, there were not one or two, you can just, uh, whichever feels good, and then you can just uh, verify that. And again, you can see in this P file, cluster database equal to two, that indicates your that database, right? So those are your cluster specific parameters, right? And then uh, again, we talked about scan and then uh, you know, clusterware and ASM uh, share uh, Oracle home. Uh, you know, this is like, you know, um, in this is very, very important here. Uh, you know, what that means clusterware and ASM share, uh, you know, same Oracle home. What that name, right? The clusterware and the ASM share the same home, thus known as a grid infrastructure home. That is started with your uh, 11G R2. Prior to 11G R2, ASM and RDBMA should be installed either on the same Oracle home or on the separate Oracle home. In 10G, what we used to do, uh, we used to do like this. Let's take one more. Uh, I'll take a new slide here. Okay, in 10G and all, what we used to do, like you know, your two node cluster here, we have a separate clusterware software. We used to install <coughs> separate clusterware software like this. U01 cluster clusterware. So we used to install U01 clusterware software like this. <clears throat> then we used to install U01 19C and then ASM. So separate ASM home. That's kind of a Oracle home. And then we used to install separate U01 19C DB home. We used to do the, like this in 10G and prior to 10G. Separate clusterware software we used to install and separate ASM software we used to install and then separate database software we used to install in uh, 10G or prior to 10G. In 11G, what, how it has done, uh, we combined these two, your clusterware and ASM software, we combined together. We combined our clusterware and ASM software and then we came up with a concept, Oracle came up with a concept, a GI, a grid infrastructure. So what we started doing, we started uh, downloading the grid infrastructure. We, this Oracle started giving a single patch, single software by combining this clusterware and ASM software. And then we started installing U01 19C uh, grid. That we can call it as a grid infrastructure. That came in, 12C release too. So separate software, including your clusterware and ASM together. So we install it as a grid software, grid infrastructure software. That's a uh, changes what happened here. Uh, otherwise we have to install a clusterware software separately, ASM software separately, database software separately. And then, you know, it's become a tedious earlier days. Uh, and then your time synchronization service. So here, one thing you need to observe, um, CRSCTL stat resource hyphen T, sorry, hyphen T hyphen init. We have, uh, so if you observe this uh, CTSST cluster time synchronization service daemon, CTSST stands for cluster time synchronization service daemon. It is in observer mode. Most of the times it will be in observer mode. You can check it any of the client machine. Uh, most of the times it will be in observer mode. Uh, why it is in observer mode? Because 
if your server is configured with ntp ntp is network time uh, protocol uh, uh, if the most of the vms most of the servers most of the industry all the servers are synced with your ntp server and if the ntp is in sync and ntp is in used in your organization our uh, cluster time synchronization service demand will go on to observer mode because already time synchronization is handled by my ntp server in your organization so i don't have any work or i don't have any job to do i'll just be in observer mode it will be in observer mode it will not be in used at all your ntp will take care of you know syncing between all your cluster nodes that's where you no know, time sync Uh, you know cluster synchronization cluster where in levenji release to requires the synchronization across all the nodes you know all the cluster nodes will be in be in sync with the time and then if you are using a ntp in your server ntp will take a highest priority if you are not using ntp then your ctsst will be in active mode right that's a indication of that and then rebootless of restart it is uh, again we'll talk uh, later and then hip it's uh, your cluster interconnects so in levenji we came up with a hip uh, you know it's a redundant interface uh, what that means uh, your cluster interconnects we talked about our private interface will be attached to this one right uh, if config uh, you can see this is your private interface right your 10389110 this is your private interconnect uh, and then this one and then on node to also node one also we have a private network here both are used for your cluster intercommunication or the block transfer catch a fusion between your cluster nodes and what happens this interface goes down if something wrong with this interface and your cluster will not cluster nodes will not be able to communicate each other and then you know cluster nodes will get evicted right so that is a very very bad uh, design so for that in levenji r2 oracle has released hip instead of one interface you can have two interface and then combine these two interface together and make it as a private network it's like a high availability within the interface itself and then right now this is active and then this is passive and then the moment this particular interface goes down automatically your cluster will start communicating with this interface that's a redundant hip you can configure it while you know uh, configuring your uh, cluster your setup i think you can select of four interfaces for private interconnect right now it is using only 2 to 4 in node 1 and 2 to 4 on node 2 only 1 1 in each of these nodes and if any one goes down it's gone like you know cluster intercommunication will not happens instead of that you can use a 2 to 2 at one node and 2 at other node and then make it as a active and passive one is active and one is passive the one goes down automatically other one will be like active that's your hip right so that came in 12 12 series release 2 but again we talked about the cluster where logs uh, in 11g and uh, 12c release one we used to see that ending with dot log uh, but uh, starting with this uh, 12c release two all are ending with dot trc i showed you right like you know ctssd.trc jipcd.trc gpnpd.trc ohsd.trc everything is like trc file starting with your 12c release two right and then some of the diagnostic tools so you can use it pretty much and then run it uh, there is a one particular mos uh, not let me open that one uh, that pretty much uh, let's see i have that one okay here uh, okay this particular mos let me open the mos support tool here very very important most document that one is uh, you know that explains very well and you know detailed manner let me log into my mos support here mm, okay logged in here let's get it here uh, i'll just go for this one this this is a mos note my oracle support note of uh, the moment you check for this particular mos support note here Uh, this is 11g release to clusterware and grid startup what you should know before you uh, you know start uh, understanding in depth concept so whatever i explained so far uh, all the key features and then all your clusterware startup sequences and then you know your level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 clusterware startup sequence with the level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 what it is getting started and then what are the logs where are my log locations 
and then what command you are going to check it out cluster with uh, you know resources and then your srfctl command what all the use cases you know just do srfctl help uh, that will give you what all commands you are going to you are going to use it all they are listed out is very beautiful with the explanation and then if you are going to use your crctl help command what all you are going to use it with the crctl command crctl check crctl enable crctl disable crctl stop crs start crs status crs check crs check cluster all all those commands you can check it out here and then your ocr config ocr config to deal with your ocr file and to deal with your olr file if you use ocr config hyphen local that will be your local uh, olr file if you don't use that local it will be like your ocr config or your ocr file and then your ols nodes what all command you can use you, you can your cluffy command what all you can use it with the cluffy command and then your cluffy stage list like you know all this you can you can refer this particular mouse note here right that's uh, about your uh, ocr and olr and then quick a few more checks here uh, in order to check your uh, olr and ocr location this is a path etc oracle and ocr that will give you your ocr file location oracle cluster registry you can see this is your oracle cluster registry and then if you want to check your olr you can instead of ocr you can do olr.loc that will give you where is your olr location like if i go here inside olr and do lsf and ltr and you can see your olr file configuration here all of them backups here and then if you see your uh, ocr location here and then that ocr location also has uh, uh, you know its own ocr file inside your cluster where and the respective backup files so i can quickly connect to my uh, asm here dot or inv plus asm1 asm cmd hyphen p and then we we know this is our ocr location i can go directly here cd and then ls hyphen l you can see this is your ocr registry ocr file inside your disk group if i go back one directory and do ls hyphen l and then you can see your ocr backup here go inside that ocr backup and you can see your all the backups are available here and your ocr will be backed up automatically every 4 hours and then uh, uh, every 24 hours and then once in a week you can see your uh, daily backups and then you can see every 4 hour backups here and then your daily backups here and then weekly backup here so ocr will be backed up automatically you no need to take and in any cluster changes you do it automatically your ocr will be backed up but only thing is olr will never be backed up you have to manually back it up right so that's the uh, other thing about olr uh, your olr location is also same you can go to etc oracle olr and then check it out right and then your ocr also same location ect oh, sorry uh, uh, etc oracle and then ocr.loc Right, and then your ocr command you can pretty much uh, you know you can use this command and then uh, you can see your backup location of your ocr and you know all other things uh, i can just uh, run this ocr help here oh sorry i'll just exit i can run here uh, that pretty much it will give you all the uh, location ocr config and then you can uh, just show show backup if you use local you can use local and if you don't want to use local you can see backup location ocr config backup location or you can use hyphen local ocr config hyphen local and then that uh, indicates your backup location and then if you want to replace add your ocr file and then manual backup uh, show backup uh, all those options you can you can verify it over here right so it's all your cluster level operations all right so and then what else uh, your ocr olr and then pretty much uh, come up with some of the common questions why we need olr what's the use of olr what's the use of ocr and then what happens if we uh, you know uh, my olr is corrupted and how we can restore my ocr is corrupted how we can restore and then how i can relocate my olr how i can you know uh, Uh, check my uh, voting disk how my voting disk is corrupted and then uh, what happens the moment you run this 
uh, CRSTL query vote disk that will give you uh, your voting disk location. And then if my voting disk is corrupted, what is the impact on that? Why we need my voting disk? Uh, you know, these all are the common questions. What is voting disk? Why we need? What is OLR? Why we need? What is OCR? Why we need? If my OCR is corrupted, what happens? If my OLR corrupted, what happens? And then uh, how to restore your OCR? How to restore your OLR? How to restore your voting disk? And then uh, if one of the voting disk corrupted, and then what happens? Can I have my voting disk in a different different disk location? My voting disk is in data disk group here. Can I have one more voting disk in a record disk group? All these common questions they will ask in the interviews, right? Uh, you know, uh, all this we can see it uh, once we start our regular classes. There's a one question in the chat here. Uh, do we have a PDBs in Rack? Obviously, uh, PDBs are anywhere, whether it's a standalone or your Rack databases. Uh, you know, we have a PDBs uh, everywhere. So again, it is all left to your configuration, how you configured. So I have one, uh, I think, Rack database here. Let's see whether this is started or not. Uh, PS EF, a grip, yes, mon. Right, it's all up here. Uh, I, I have this one here. Um, mm, okay, CDBDB. Okay, good. I have one uh, container database here. I can show you that. Dot what I env. Dot what I env here. If I set to CDBDB here, SQL plus slash as is DBA. Uh, I can do show PDBs. Uh, you can see I have PDB one, two, three, all are like mounted. I have PDB, this is the common default template. Uh, all these PDBs are mounted. It is not started here. So this is one of the React database. So if I go to other node also, you can see the same PDBs uh, on the CDBs on the other node. Uh, sorry for that uh, background uh, noise. Uh, I'll just connect to that other CDB is here. Uh, again, same CDB one instance is here and CDB two instance is here. If I do here, yes, mon, uh, you can see your uh, CDB DB two instance here. If I connect to that instance here, and then CDB two is here. If I connect to my CDB instance, show PDB is here, right, you can see your PDB. But one thing what you need to, like people often get confused here. Uh, you know, you can see here, right? Um, your CDB is a database name. If I do SRV CTL status database hyphen D and then CDB DB. Uh, people, people often get confused when working with rack, especially container database. Uh, you have a CDB DB as a database name. We know we we suffix with this instance one and instance two on both the nodes. CDB DB instance one, CDB DB instance two running on node one and node two. That's how our architecture works, Rack architecture. And then the moment I connect to my uh, CDB DB instance one, I have my PDB one, and then it's supposed to be PDB one followed by like suffix one, right? PDB three followed by suffix one, PDB two suffix one because like you know. My database is uh, ended with instance one. I All my PDB also end with instance one here. I have PDB one here, even though it is running under PD, uh, CDB DB one. If I go to other uh, sessions here, CDB two, again, I can see my PDB instance one, uh, PDB instance three, PDB instance two. I don't see that suffix here inside, inside my PDB level. How my uh, CDB is suffixed with like, you know, CDB, CDB one, two. Uh, similarly, people also, uh, you know, ex, you know, uh, you know, expecting a PDB one one, PDB three followed by one, PDB two followed by one, and then here uh, PDB one followed by two, PDB three followed by two, PDB two followed by two. That's you know suffix they are expecting here. Uh, as per this uh, knowledge, right? Whatever we have, it. but that is not how it works here. PDBs are individual to that uh, instance level. So this PDB will never interfere with this particular PDB. So that is inside that particular instance. So that kind of naming conventions will not work at PDB level, right? So that's a quick update on that. About your voting disk, and then we understood about uh, different files where they resides. And then, uh, yeah, some of the background process will talk that uh, GS, LMD, LMS, because these are your locking mechanism, you know? If one instance is updating one table, 
and then other instance should not update the same table with the same row or same column. So because of that, we got with the GS global NQ lock service, LMD lock manager demon, LMS lock manager service, and then Elmont lock monitor, and then LCK instance uh, NQ processes. These are your locking mechanism in your cluster level, how it works. And then your GS global cache services, your uh, uh, cache fusion, you know, transferring the blocks between uh, you know, cluster instances, the block uh, buffer cache to buffer cache. That's your cache fusion. One of the common question, what is cache fusion? You know, transferring the blocks between one instance to other instance, one buffer cache to other buffer cache. That's your cache fusion. What is split pane syndrome? Uh, you know, if split pane syndrome, if your nodes are not able to communicate with each other, and then the split pane syndrome will happen. If the nodes are not able to write into your uh, voting disk, the split pane syndrome will happen. We'll talk about that when it happens, what time the node eviction will happen. And then again, the data files, where the data files we understood. Um, and then we understood about the architecture yesterday. Right, that pretty much uh, what I wanted to cover as part of this uh, demo sessions. If you have any questions or queries, we'll discuss. Otherwise, we're pretty much done with this demo process. Yeah, hello, Malik. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, I messed up with the time. So yesterday there was a, a demo class. Right. I thought, uh, yeah, 23rd, 24th, you know, was starting, you know, I mean, today and then tomorrow. So it looks like I need to set that right. Oh, uh, ping, yeah. right, ping me on my WhatsApp. Uh, probably I'll okay. give you that demo classes. You can go oh, Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. 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 All right. So I'll, 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 I'll reach out to you later then. Right. Right. Yeah. Ping me on my WhatsApp. Yeah. Sure. All right. Good night. Thank you so much. Right. All right. So any more queries, any questions anybody has, feel free to ask uh, or else you can reach out to me on my WhatsApp. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss further any concerns or queries. All right, guys. Hello, sir. Yep. Uh, sir, uh, yeah. Sir, can you uh, please explain like uh, what are the kinds of storages that are being used uh, in so, organizations? Like uh, we have NAS, we have SAN. Anything uh, like it is left uh, to your organization. Uh, is yeah. the RAID? No, anything is supported here. Like your SAN, NAS, NetApp, your uh, you know any kind of storage is supported here. VMware, your uh, you know whatever storage they have it, everything is supported here. No need to worry on that. Uh, all kind okay. of support. I worked on VMware, it's supported. I worked on NetApp. NetApp also rack is supported. Your SAN, NAS, everything is supported. Uh, you know, you just need to mount the same disk across all the disks, all the all the nodes, all the kind of storage supports are are supported here with the rack setup. Only thing is little challenges are when you are trying to set up your rack on your AWS, when you're trying to set up a rack on your Azure, when you're trying to set up a rack on your Google Cloud. That is where the challenges comes. But pretty much apart from this cloud vendors like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, if you're locally working on your VMs and then trying to set up all kind of underlying storage are supported, your NetApp, SAN, uh, your uh, you know uh, VMware storage, all kind of uh, storage are supported here. Many people will be having uh, setting up of a rack on Azure as you're having a lot of challenges. But it is a doable. You can do it. Some tweaking, some parameters. All right. Uh, any questions? All right, guys. Thank you all. Uh, we will connect on our regular classes. Bye.